Hey, my name is Caleb Bridges and this is Leave the Rest. And today's topic has to do with responding to our convictions. You know, conviction is something that we all experience. Uh, but have you ever noticed that sometimes you'll be convicted about something and then later you don't have that same conviction? Or maybe you have a conviction, but then it grows over time. So I want to kind of talk about some of those things and why do convictions come and go? You know, I think our convictions and the way that God convicts our hearts is His mercy and love towards us. That He doesn't want us to stay in our sin. He doesn't want us to continue to do the things that displease Him. He wants what's best for us. He wants us to experience Him fully. And He shows us that by trying to lead us in the correct direction. And how does he do that? He points out the incorrect direction in our life through convictions. But what do we do when that conviction comes? You know, how do I respond? What is my response when I'm convicted? Um, I want to start by looking at scripture. And this is in Acts 2, 36 and 37. And speaking to the Israelites here, it says, Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now listen to the people's response. Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And so we see the Israelites' response. that They were pierced to the heart, Scripture tells us. So they had that conviction. They wanted to do something about it. They knew that they had sinned. They had made a mistake. And their heart was to correct that mistake, to do what was right. I think we all need to pray that we have a heart to want to correct things when we realize that we're making a mistake. We want to act on those convictions, just as the Israelites did in this picture. But have you ever noticed that people who feel slightly convicted about something, sometimes one of our habits is to want to surround ourselves with people who are doing that same thing? It's almost like I have this conviction, but it's something that I really don't want to let go of yet. In other words, I've been convicted, but I want to try to tell myself that it's really not wrong. So what do I do? I go try to find other people who are doing that thing or who agree with me that it's really not wrong, right? Because we're trying to feel better about something that we are having convictions about. I think we all probably do that, and it's probably one of those negative things. But I really think there's two major things that keep us from responding to our convictions. One of them is laziness. It's a lack of discipline. I mean, in all reality, if we're having a conviction, it means that we need to stop doing something that we probably like. And let's face it, that's never easy, right? To give up something that I enjoy is never easy. I think the second major thing that keeps us from responding to our convictions is our pride. I think to respond and to change something I'm doing means that I have to accept the fact that I was wrong. And sometimes that's hard, especially if other people are gonna know it. It's really hard for us to accept that and really be able to be accepted as being wrong. And so I think sometimes Satan likes to use that as well. You know, I think there are really, I, I, one of the things that I find ironic is that and maybe you've noticed this too, but some of the people who feel like there's absolutely nothing wrong with them are sometimes the nastiest people that I've ever met. And it's funny that some of the most pure-hearted and seemingly good people I've met seem to believe that they're really sinful. And I've kind of wondered why that's kind of backwards like that. And I think the truth is, is that the more holy we become, so the more I grow in my relationship with Christ, the closer I get to God, the more clearly I'm able to see into my own life, the more clearly I'm able to see who I really am. And so I'm, I'm able to start seeing sin in my life that I had no idea was even there because now I'm growing close to God and He's opening my eyes. He's wanted to open my eyes, but all this sin has kind of kept Him from being able to show me what reality is. And so I've really found that some of the most holy people I know seem to think that they're the most sinful. And then, unfortunately, some of the, the nastiest people I've ever met seem to think that they're the, the best. They're the most holy. They're, there's nothing wrong with them. And I think I've been that guy. I think I've been that guy who's thought, man, there's nothing wrong with me. And it's kind of shown just how sinful I really am. Um, but, you know, I want to show you guys just two examples real quick. And these examples have to do with just trying to give you a little bit of an idea of what does it look like when I respond to my convictions? And then what does it look like when I fail to respond to my convictions? 
And so these might be silly examples, but try to follow with me. The first one has to do with responding to our convictions. <clears throat> and I've got this illustration here. I've got this little two-way mirror. And let's say this is your life. And, and as you can tell, it's very clear. Um, and let's say this is you without sin, right? So this reflection is, there's nothing that's messing it up, but then let's turn it over. Okay, and you've noticed that this is blurry. This has kind of been dirtied. I've kind of dirtied this up a little bit. This is what sin does. Sin clouds us from seeing what we really are. Sin clouds my ability to see who I really am and what I really am. So that when I look in this mirror, am I really seeing myself? I'm kind of seeing myself. I'm seeing a little bit of a reflection of me, but I can't really tell. If there were things on my face, if I was dirty, if my hair was messed up, I'd have no idea because I can't really see myself clearly in this mirror. Why? Because this is what sin does. And so when I respond to my convictions, let's say that, that this is my life and this is sin that's kind of clouded my ability to see myself. So what happens when I start to respond to those convictions? Um, you know, God starts to show me things. He starts to convict me of stuff that needs to change in my life. And slowly what happens is, and it doesn't happen all at once, but I start to get to a place where, well, hey, I can see, I can see myself a little more clearly. I'm, I'm, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not what I thought I was. Maybe, maybe I have some problems with me. Because now I'm responding to the convictions God's given me and so I'm beginning to clean up some of that sin. And so now I'm being able to see a more clear reflection of who I really am. And I think as we grow with our relationship with the Lord, he's able to reveal more and more things to us. In other words, he's able, he allows us to be able to see ourselves more and more clearly until finally I get to a place where, man, I can see myself very clearly. I can see what needs to change. I can see what needs to be fixed because I've begun to respond to those convictions. And so I hope that kind of gives you an idea real quickly of what happens when we respond to convictions. So when I respond to them, it cleans me up and it allows me to see more things that need to change and I can act on and do other things. So the second example I wanna give you is what happens when we don't respond to our convictions. So what happens when I'm convicted and I choose to ignore it. I choose to look away. I choose to surround myself with other people so I don't have to feel bad about it. So I, wanna, I want you to picture or imagine in your head real quick this triangle, okay? And this triangle is made up of razor sharp blades on all three sides, okay? And I have a piece of styrofoam, not a great example, but imagine that this is actually um, just a blade, okay? So razor sharp on all three angles. Imagine that God pushes this into our hearts, right? And every time he convicts us of a sin, God's turning that blade. He's turning it in our hearts. Man, we feel it. It's hurt. It's cutting in. It's a strong conviction. We know we need to change. But what happens when we fail to respond to that conviction? So I choose not to do it. I choose to ignore it, okay? So I decide, you know what? I know that thing's wrong, but I'm just, I'm just not going to do anything about it. Well, I've doled it off some, right? I've chosen to ignore it, and so it's kind of dulled that edge a little bit. And then let's say something else comes along and God convicts me of something else, and I choose to ignore that as well. Well, now I've doled another part of it. He's still turning it, but I'm not feeling it as much. Why? Because I've started to dull off these edges. And then let's say a third time God convicts me, and I choose to ignore it again. Well, after a while, it turns into a circle where God's still convicting, he's still turning it, but I've chosen to ignore him so many times that even though he wants to convict me, my heart's now dulled it, it's so dull and cold that I can't even respond or feel anymore. That's the danger of not responding to our convictions. And so we wanna always respond and we want to pray that God would show us our sin because he's merciful and he will. So I hope this video has made a little bit of sense and I didn't confuse you too much. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.